If you want to support me a bit more, link to my Patreon is in the, is, is in the description. This video has been sponsored by Diodica.com. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. Back from my vacation and we are going to start this new quarter off with differential equations. Today we want to take a look at first order ordinary differential equations in the first part of the video and in the second part I'm going to show you a very powerful technique that we are going to use a lot later on and if you study physics you are going to use it all the time. Basically it's called separation of variables and we are going to solve a famous boy with it. But at first let's take a look at general nth order ordinary differential equations. That's a hard word to say, try it out for yourself. <laughs> so it basically just contains of this nth derivative of y, which is in terms of t, and on the right hand side we have some function f, which is continuous, and it depends on t and y and the first derivative of y up until the n minus one derivative of y. That's basically it. And we only want to take a look at this case today. So y prime equals to f of t and y. Just like here. And like I said before, this function f is continuous and it's going from some open omega to the real numbers. And well, that's basically all we really need. And also we want to consider a pair, which is made out of some interval, subset of the real numbers, and also some phi, which is differentiable. We need phi to be differentiable. It's quite important. And this pair right here is called a solution to the differential equation if two little conditions hold. So at first we have this weird condition right here, but we really need this condition. You know what it is basically? It's called a graph. So you can graph y equals to x, it's just a straight line. So basically it just tells you something about the x and y coordinate. And it's just a special subset of the Cartesian product of domain and codomain. Never mind. But we need this condition to know where our information comes from that we plug into this differential equation and also we need this to hold. So it does make sense. We want to plug in this function phi into this differential equation and we want all the rules of this differential equation to hold on this phi. That's basically it. And also there's something called an initial value problem. So if we plug some x naught into this function phi, then we end up with some phi naught. And if we plug some x naught into this um, phi prime, then we end up with some phi one. We have done this before um, when Integrating, uh, I used the Leibniz rule for integration to make a differential equation out of, the, uh, out of that integral and then we plugged in some initial conditions to find out our constants. That's all there really is to it, but it's quite important. We are having this situation in physics all the time. And now I want you guys to consider two little cases. So at first we say that our y of t is just constant. That means we end up with this differential equation of this form, y prime equals to this function in terms of t. And also we have this, uh, this case right here. It's just the thing we started off with. And that's quite easy right here. So just to re remember what y prime is, Ugh, my English sucks. So this is just dy dt, you know what it is. And now we can integrate both sides with respect to t with some proper upper and lower bound. For example, the upper and lower bound being from x0 to x. So let's just go ahead and do this. So integrating from x0 to x, this dy dt with respect to t, well, we are differentiating this function y in terms of t and then we are integrating it back in terms of t. Well, that just leaves us with the function itself but with the upper and lower bounds plugged in. So we have y of x minus y of x naught, which would just be um, the solution to our initial value problem, for example, y naught. Okay, great. And also you might notice we have y of x right here, which is going to be the solution to our differential equation, so that's quite nice. Okay, but we also have a right-hand side, so let's integrate this too. So we have the integral from x naught to x of f of t integrated with respect to t. And this right here gives us a proper solution. Just bring this y of x naught to the other side and then we are done. So that's nice. The second case is quite similar. So integrating the left hand side will leave us with the same expression. So we have y of x minus y of x naught. But on the right hand side, let's go ahead and compute this. So we have the integral from x naught to x of f of t y of t 
with respect to t. And that's not very good. That's the harder case because we don't really have a real solution to this. So we have to do some more work like black pen, red pen would say. It's just um, we we have the solution to our differential equation on the right side in this function. It's just like calculating the value of pi using pi itself. It's, it's quite stupid. So this case requires a bit more work, but it's still a way to compute the solution to this differential equation. And now we are going to start off with the third way to solve this system right here using separation of variables on the next blackboard. Like I said before, this right here is going to be a powerful boy. And it's going to be the first thing you are going to try when dealing with partial differential equations. So here's the technique itself. So we have this multivariable function and we are going to assume that we can split this up into the product of two new functions. So let's assume that f of t and y is nothing other than some phi of t times small psi of y. And we are doing this under the assumption that this right here is the solution to a linear homogeneous partial differential equation. That's also a very difficult word. Try it out for yourself. So let's plug this information in. So we have phi of t times psi of y of t. And that's why I made the other video at first, because we know how to solve this. This is just a partial, differ uh, a separable differential equation. I'm terribly sorry. And we're going to say that this psi right here isn't equal to zero. Otherwise, that would also be zero and that would just be the trivial solution. We don't want that. And yeah, let's divide it on both sides and see what we get. Because we know how to solve this. So we now have y prime of t over psi of y of t equals to phi of t. And now we could integrate both sides with or without up and lower bounds. Let's, let's do it without up and lower bounds. So integrating both sides with respect to t, we would end up with a plus c on this side and some other constant on this side. Let's subtract the constant from this side on both sides. And then we end up with some constant minus a constant, which is still just a constant. So we have some big plus c. Ugh. And separable differential equations, we are going to assume that this right here has an antiderivative, which we are going to call capital Psi, I don't know. So this right here is capital Psi of y of t. And then we are basically done. So that would be the solution to all separable differential equation. That's what we would get. And now we want to use this technique on a famous boy, a very famous boy. In the normal case, this would be subject to partial differential equations, subject to another video, but I just want to show you the power of separation of variables. And this right here, as you might notice, is Papa Schrödinger, the Schrödinger equation. And we are going to turn this time-dependent equation into a independent, into a stationary Schrödinger equation. So let's go ahead and do this. And just like before, we want to make this into a product solution, this wave function. So we have um, let our psi of x and t equal to, I don't know, I don't really care, phi of x times uh, small psi of t. So let's go ahead and do this. And now we can plug all this stuff in. That also means that we have i and then the Planck constant times the partial derivative of all this chunk phi of x psi of t equals to minus Planck constant squared over 2 times the mass del x squared, that's a 2. And also we have phi of x psi of t plus and all this chunk. Yeah, phi of x psi of t. And caution my boys, we are differentiating here. So this is a partial derivative of this function. So don't get the idea that you can cancel, for example, this and that out, that doesn't work. But what we can do, we can still divide both sides by this right here under the assumption that both of those aren't equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do this. What would we end up with? So dividing both sides, we have i times Papa Planck. Okay, now we are dividing this whole term by those two functions. Well, phi of x is independent on time, so we can bring it to the outside. So this and that is going to cancel out, but just like I said before, this 
and that isn't going to cancel out. So don't get the idea that you can do this. So let's just divide by psi of t and we have the partial derivative in terms of time of psi of t. And this is now equal to minus h over 2m. Same spiel here. We are differentiating in terms of the distance x right here. So this and that is going to cancel out but we are going to divide this term by this. So over phi of x and then del x squared phi of x plus v of x which is just the potential. And it's important that our potential isn't time dependent because if you take a look this left hand side is totally time dependent and this right hand side is totally dependent on the distance on x. That means if we would change the time nothing would change on the right hand side that would give us an inequality and if we would change the distance nothing would change on the left hand side also an inequality. That means both sides need to be constant in order for this to work. So what we can conclude let's just take a look at the left hand side that i h over psi of t del t psi of t is just some arbitrary constancy doing dimensional analysis later on. So that's the first thing we can conclude and we can actually solve that. That is not too hard. So let's go ahead and do this. So just like I said before, just taking a look at this side right now because that's the only thing we can solve right now because we don't know anything about the potential. So I have turned this differential form into this um, form right here, this Newton form with the prime doesn't quite matter. So what we can do now we can divide both sides by i times h because it's not equal to zero. So that also means that we end up with psi prime over psi equals to c over i times h and we can expand this fraction by i over i so that's something we can do and well this and that multiplied will give us minus one so we just end up with minus c times i over h. And now we can integrate both sides and see what we get. So now we are integrating both sides psi prime over psi dt and what is that? Well what we can do we can introduce a u substitution for example. So let u equal to psi of t that also means that du is nothing other than psi prime of t dt. Well this right here is just the upper term so this is du and we get the integral of du over u which is just going to be the natural log of u. And we know what u is, u is just psi of t so let's plug this in so we have natural log of psi of t with absolute values. And also we are going to integrate this right hand side. Um, well that's quite easy just add a t to this thing and then we are done. So I know uh, I hope you guys know how to integrate a constant. <laughs> so we have minus c times i over h times t and don't forget we are integrating without an upper and lower bound so that means we have a constant on this side and on this side. Let's subtract both sides by this constant and we get another constant on this side. So let's call it I don't know um, something else k. And now we are going to exponentiate both sides to get the solution to our differential equation. So that also means that e to the ln of something is just the argument itself. So we have psi of t is now equal to e to the minus c times i over h times t plus some constant k. But we can use the rules of exponentiation and turn this into e to the something times e to the k. But e to the k is just another constant so let's call this bad boy e schlange, e snack just like so often. I just love to say e snack. <laughs> okay and now for the last part. So we have found out everything we needed. We just want to find out what our constant c is and that's quite important because it is fundamental when dealing with the uh, Schrödinger equation. So let's do some dimensional analysis. So in order for this stuff to make sense we um, want this to be a number up here so we don't want any dimensions in the exponent. So what do we have here? Well we have angular momentum and we have the reciprocal of angular momentum times the time. So what do we have? So we have seconds over. Okay reciprocal is just kilograms meters squared seconds squared and we are going to multiply this dimension by this constant c 
but this right here is just 1 over joule. So this right here is just 1 over joule. So we need this constant to be uh, to have a dimension of joules. So that's just an energy. So we are going to call this little c, capital E for example, for the whole energy of the system. So that's fundamental and we need this. And that's basically it. Now we can plug all this stuff in and see what we get. So just a quick little side note. Do not wonder where this E snack comes from because if we differentiate psi of t, we can uh, bring this um, E snack to the outside. It is not dependent on time, so we end up with E snack times this chunk equals to this constant c and then we have another constant. So it's just what it is, it's just another constant, write it out and you will see where it comes from. Okay, and the last few steps to make this a little bit more aesthetic is to factor out 1 over phi of x on the right hand side. So that also means e times c snack equals to 1 over phi of x times minus papa blank squared over 2m del x squared phi of x plus um, and we have the potential times phi of x. Don't forget to um, bring this here because we have 1 over phi of x factored out. Okay, and now we want to factor out phi of x and bring it to the right hand side. And do not get the stupid idea that you can cancel this phi of x out, this 1 over phi of x with this phi of x because we are differentiating that. That's an operator right here. That's the uh, momentum operator. Don't do that. So what do we end up with? E times E snack equals to 1 over phi of x and then times minus h squared over 2m del x squared and then plus v of x phi of x. And physicists like to call this thing right here the Hamiltonian. Some capital H with a little roof. So that's, that's making it quite nice, easy to write. And also let's multiply both sides by phi of x so that we get it here. That also means that we have E times E snack phi of x equals to the Hamiltonian times phi of x. And well, most physicists also call this function right here psi. I have mixed it up. Never mind. And also one little uh, thing we can do, we can absorb this constant into this here because, well, this is just some function, uh, for example, uh, some amplitude times the cosine of something. So that means we can absorb it to get our final solution. E times phi of x equals to h roof times phi of x. And you might notice we have a quantity times something equals to another quantity times the same something. That's called an eigenvalue problem. And in quantum mechanics, we want to solve those eigenvalue problems for different potentials, v of x. So that's what we want to do in quantum mechanics using this Schrödinger equation. And that's really cool. It's a lot of fun solving those integrals and stuff like this. Topic for later today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let's place the chalk here. This video took me quite a while. I re-recorded this so often. I don't know, it just didn't work out up until now, I guess. I hope it was quite okay, and if you think it was, please like and subscribe and recommend me if you like. Share this video and don't forget to activate this weird bell because many people told me that they are not getting any notifications at all. If you want to support me a bit more, link to my Patreon is in the, is, is in the description and up until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya. Was will man machen? Schaut halt so scheiße aus, wie man ausschaut, ne? Nützt ja nicht. Ich kann auch nichts dafür, dass ich so hässlich aussehe. <lacht>